Uh, hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about design-based research and technology design, development, implementation, and evaluation in educational context. This video also covers several instructional design models that are commonly used in design-based research, such as EDI models. Well, what is design-based research? Design-based research, or DBR, is a methodology that aims to improve educational practices by developing and testing interventions in real-world settings, particularly those enhanced by technology. Unlike traditional research methods that often seek to produce generalizable knowledge, DBR focuses on practical and collaborative approaches aimed directly at improving educational settings through iterative testing and refinement. When and why to use DBR? You might wonder, when should I use DBR? It's particularly useful in situations where existing theories or models don't fully address the specific context or challenges of your educational environment. This is especially relevant when integrating technology, which can vary significantly across different settings and user needs. DBR is beneficial because it generates practical solutions grounded in actual practice. It promotes continuous improvement through iterative cycles. It encourages collaboration between researchers, educators, and technologists. Example of DBR in action. Consider a scenario where educators notice that students struggle with critical thinking in a complex biology course. They design an app that uses interactive simulations to enhance critical thinking. With DBR, they would initially pilot the app with a small group of students, gather feedback, and refine the app through several iterations. The iterative cycles ensure the app effectively engages students and improves learning outcomes while providing valuable data for future improvements. The role of technology in DBR. Technology plays a pivotal role in DBR by allowing researchers to create innovative educational tools, collect extensive data on user interactions and learning outcomes, rapidly iterate and improve upon educational interventions. Different types of instructional design models. Instructional design involves systematic processes to create effective educational experiences, often enhanced by technology. There are several models out there, such as Kemp Design Model, focuses on elements like learner perception and motivation. Morrison, Ross, and Kemp Model, emphasizes the continuous feedback loop. Assure Model, incorporates technology and media specifically, with a focus on learner characteristics. However, the most widely recognized model in instructional design is the ADI model, which I'll focus on from here. The ADI model. The ADI model is a framework that stands for analysis, design, development, implementation, and evaluation. It's a foundational instructional design model that guides the entire process of creating effective educational programs, particularly those involving technology. One, analysis. Determine needs and goals. In the analysis phase, you identify the learning problem the goals and objectives, the audience's needs, and any existing knowledge gaps. For example, if a company wants to train employees on new software, analyzing current proficiency levels and common challenges will inform the instructional design. 2. Design. Plan the instructional strategy. Design involves planning the instructional strategy and creating detailed outlines and storyboards. This phase includes deciding on content, exercises, methodologies, and assessment instruments. For instance, for the software training, you might create a storyboard mapping the user journey and interaction points within the training modules. 3. Development. Create the instructional materials. In this phase, all the actual content and materials are produced, often using technological tools. This might include developing e-learning modules, writing manuals, or creating video content. Continuing with the software training example, you develop interactive tutorials, video walkthroughs, and quizzes that align with your design phase plans. 
4. Implementation Deliver the training Implementation is about delivering the created content to learners. Technology plays a crucial role here, whether through an LMS, learning management system, mobile apps, or other tech platforms. For our software training, this might mean uploading the modules to an online platform and scheduling webinars or in-person workshops. 5. Evaluation – Assess the Effectiveness Evaluation happens in two stages, formative evaluation throughout the process and summative evaluation at the end. Technology enables the collection of extensive data on learner performance and engagement, helping to refine the instruction. For the software training, you'd gather feedback through surveys, measure understanding via quizzes, and possibly observe changes in workflow efficiency. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.